The Apple event just ended and the new machines aren't even shipped out yet to people, yet we already have some geek benchmarks and scores and of course I'm gonna add this Take this with a grain of salt because, well, Geekbench itself has quite a history of not being consistent. If you take a look at any specs from the past and you see Geekbench version 4 and Geekbench 5, you'll see a pretty big discrepancy in the numbers there. Here's a, a table from EE Times that shows some benchmarks and uh, the discrepancy in single core. So before I show you the results, Whenever you see Geekbench scores in YouTube videos, yeah, right here on YouTube, there's people doing tons of videos and they're saying, here are the Geekbench scores, you should trust these. Take that with a grain of salt. All right, let's get into it. First, we'll talk about the M1 Pro chip. This is not super easy to find right now because it's it's got the model number. It doesn't have the 2021 tag that usually these names have. So here we go. Single core score is 1,767 and multi-core is a whopping 11,777. Of course, these will vary a little bit. But what I've seen so far is that this score is actually pretty close to the M1 max score. We'll take a look at that in a second. Here, what else do they have here? Let's check it out. So system information. This is the system that was tested, Mac OS 12.0.1. There's the model, and that model corresponds to the new MacBook Pros. And there's the name of the processor, Apple M1 Pro. And this is the 10 core version with 32 gigabytes of RAM. And as it happens, this is the machine that I ordered one of the two machines that I ordered. I ordered a 14 inch MacBook Pro with this configuration and a 16 inch MacBook Pro with a slightly different configuration. Here's a single core performance. I'm just gonna scroll down this and if you need to pause or anything like that, just go ahead and pause the video. There you go. There is your single core tests. The ones that are more relevant to us developers is probably this machine learning one and some game developers will probably be interested in other things like ray tracing. If you're doing any kind of uh, computer vision stuff, you might be interested in face detection. All right, here's the multi-core performance result. So 11,777, all right, there you go. Look at that. Well, you need a comparison point, right? So we're gonna take a look at the next one, which is the high-end model. And this is the M1 Max chip. I'm gonna switch between these two tabs you can see that the single core score is not that much higher. The multi-core score is higher, but not terribly higher. All right, let's keep going here. And we have the Apple M1 Max, 10 cores, 64 gigabytes of RAM. Now, what's curious to me is that the base frequency is the same on both of these, and it looks like they have pretty much the exact same configuration. Again, I'm just reading this, showing you what it says, Take it as you will. All right, here we go. Single core results. Scroll that down for you. Let's take a look at that machine learning score. For machine learning, we got 1226 for the Pro and 1280 for the Max. Multi-core performance is much higher. Here we go, I'll scroll that down for you. And the machine learning score for multi-core is quite a bit higher. Instead of 7766, we've got 8109. Based on these numbers, the M1 Max outperforms all the Mac chips up till now, except for the ones in the Mac Pro. Not the MacBook Pro, but the Mac Pro computer. Now, I also wanted to give you a little bit of perspective here on uh, some other machines that are listed on Geekbench. So here we go. Uh, top multi-core Geekbench 5 CPU results. So the highest one listed here, it's 128 cores. It's a AMD Epic 7763. I don't even know what that is, but that's listed at 75,539. It's probably some kind of crazy server. I don't know what that does, but that's the range that we're kind of working with here. So yeah, uh, M1 Max for a laptop machine is pretty darn good. But if you are looking for a top of the line processor, and you're probably not going to be looking at these machines anyway, if you need something that's this crazy powerful. Now, another comparison point I want to throw up here is the MacBook Pro 13 inch late 2020. And that one is running an Apple M1 processor, eight cores, eight gigabytes of memory. And the total multi-core score is 7694. 
single core score is 1745. I'll scroll that one down for you as well so you can check that out. And as you can see, it's considerably lower for the multi-core and single core scores for the M1 chip. M1, M1 Max, M1 Pro, big difference. That's the bottom line here. And of course, because this machine is near and dear to my heart, because I've been using it for so long, here is the 16 inch MacBook Pro Intel Core i9. And the score is actually pretty close to that of the M1 MacBook Pro. But of course, that's multi-core. Single core test, the M1 destroys the Intel one. So here is the Geekbench score for the Intel i9 processor. And this is a machine that's still pretty good. If you get your hands on it for some kind of discounted price, second hand or so. And if you are looking for an Intel machine, go for it. By the way, I just did a video on the pros and cons of still going for an Intel machine. Check that out, link to it right here. And of course, once these machines land in people's hands, you'll be seeing additional M1 Max and M1 Pro Geekbench results in the coming weeks and months. And on this channel, I'll be doing some developer-related reviews of the technologies that developers use, programming languages, and so on hands-on. So if that uh, subscribe button is red, make sure you turn it gray by tapping on it. Thanks a lot, folks. I'll see you later.